Today, in my Commodore 64 videos, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to have a look at a particular demo effect and try and explain how it works. So I'm going to be looking at this demo. It was suggested by one of my YouTube followers. And they were wondering about this effect at the beginning, where we have this rotating effect in the background, and then these letters that also rotate come scrolling in. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. The first thing to notice is that we have two distinct layers here with some rotation, which, you know, generally speaking, the Commodore VIC chip doesn't handle rotation. There is no hardware rotation as such, not like the Super Nintendo. So how on earth is this demo effect working? Looking at this screen in the C64 debug GUI, we can see that the character letter, the characters used in the letters are actually sheared when the letters are rotated. When we look in the debug view, there is no rotation in the debug view. The debug view is just showing the character screen as normal. But if we notice with the X scroll, as I move the targeting cursor up and down, which represents the raster position, with this rotated position here, the X scroll is actually changing on, say for example, every other or nearly every raster line. So we know that now that the horizontal shear, the horizontal angle, if you like, or the horizontal shear, as it's more accurately known as, is actually updated by the horizontal X scroll. And if there is a more, if there's more than, if there's more than eight pixel scroll, then of course the characters have to get shifted across as well to account for that extra scroll. We can see, if we go to the ROM character set, we can see that the background repeating characters are actually, well, the, the, the background scrolling parallax layer, if you like, is actually comprised of a repeated section of characters. We could see those individual characters when we looked at it in the ROM character set. We can see that when it's scrolling, and it's reached the next part of the demo, so we'll restart it. But when it was scrolling there, we could see that it was rapidly cycling around four different character sets. So we'll go back and have a look at that again. We'll switch off the bad line view just to make it easier to see. But if you notice on the right hand side there, we have the character set view and it's rapidly rotating around four different character sets. If you've seen my other videos on, say, for example, Hawkeye or uh, Turrican 2, for example, then four different character sets can be used to counter rotate a smooth uh, X or Y scroll, uh, the hardware scroll in the VIC registers. So I think this is what's happening here is that the four different character sets have different definitions for that background. Uh, parallax layer and the character set because it also includes some vertical shear as well depending on the angle if you like of what the background layer is meant to be uh, rotated as then the character set is probably going to be filled with a whole bunch of definitions for the background parallax layer plus a combination of the foreground large characters overlaid on top of the background. So let's have a look at this in ICU 64 and just to see more easily see what we can find in the memory when it's actually running. C64 debug GUI is great for spotting things like raster effects and whether or not things are sprites, but we didn't see any sprites here. So we're going to look at this now in the memory debug view. Now that's interesting. If we zoom in, you can see at the very beginning that when there's no rotation, the screen is filled with ats. In other words, a particular character, which in this case, because I'm using the ROM characters, 
to, to render the character text screen, then it renders it as at. That indicates that it's basically zero, is a, is a zero byte. But when there is some rotation there, if I cycle between the four different character sets that are in memory at 2000, 2800, 3000, 3800, then you can see that it scrolls left and right in the debug view. So if we pause this view there, we can very clearly see now in the debug view there that we can see the shared characters. And that's because there's more than eight pixels horizontal here. Now, this is interesting. Look at the character sets here. We definitely have those four character sets in memory. But if I zoom in and then expand this window, we can see how the character set has been arranged. So we have the repeated uh, background parallax scrolling effect there, but then each character is slightly vertically skewed or warped, if you like. But then we have the solid characters coming in as well for the foreground letters. And it looks like it's just very, a very well organized character set so that the vertical skew combines with the horizontal skew to give us what looks like, for small angles anyway, a, a reasonably passable rotation effect. Because if you add a horizontal skew and a vertical skew, then you get this overall rotation effect. Let's just quickly hop back into C64 debug GUI just to really remind ourselves. Now, if we pause it on a screen where there's really good rotation, we can just double check something here. We can see that there's actually quite a lot of memory filling going on as well in the background. But yes, that X scroll, it, it really does definitely change as it goes up and down the screen there. So yeah, this is, this is what we're seeing. Now, because the Commodore 64 has 40 characters across and each character is eight pixels wide, that's kind of like the vert mo that that's that's the most uh, vertical shear that we can have in terms of horizontal resolution without having a ton of extra uh, complex characters. So this limits the overall rotation that we could actually do with this kind of effect. So going back to ICU C64, we can see from the debug memory view there how the background parallax layer uses a specific arrangement of repeating characters. Now these background characters that we saw from the character set when we move through the character sets before, when we animated them, we could see that they counter rotated to the smooth X scroll. So we have these two combined skews along the X axis and the Y axis horizontally and vertically across the screen. So the overall, this is a really good uh, demo effect. It combines a couple of different effects to really generate something which is quite breathtaking. And uh, the demo writer has very cleverly figured out that actually they've got enough available characters to represent the rotations for the characters and then underlay a repeating counter-rotated pattern as well for the parallax layer behind. So this effect would have been good on its own if we had just the foreground rotated characters, right? But because the background parallax layer is introduced as well, then this adds a much, a very impressive extra dimension, haha, if you like, to the overall effect for this part of the demo. So we have the vertical shear, we have a horizontal shear, and then if you can kind of imagine now that this is representing the top left hand or the top edge and the left hand edge of a, of a very large rotated character cell. So one vector, if you like, the horizontal vector goes off there 
and it's in the vertical vector goes down in this direction here and the vertical vector has this horizontal skew and the horizontal vector has this vertical skew to it and then basically that's how uh, with enough horizontal and vertical resolution for horizontal and vertical skews that's actually how the things like the super nintendo would do rotation of their mode 7 screens it's actually how my um, mega wang uh, 2000 turbo edition hardware that I've been working on also does its skew rotation rotation or skew based rotation where actually scaling is added as well as well as um, a difference in X and difference in Y gradient as well so that we could actually have smooth curves for example built up not just um, 2D rotation or scaling you could actually generate perspective effects and stuff like that as well but that's basically what's going on in this rather lovely little demo segment at the beginning and while it's actually running and even when large characters are appearing on the screen uh, there, there's no color ram updates going on because there doesn't need to be there's no color ram updates apart from the color ram updates that are done at the, at the very beginning of the demo where the effect scrolls on. But we can definitely see here that uh, when it's rotated like this, the background screen has these repeated characters. Now, when uh, some of the other characters, the larger characters come in, I would expect to see uh, higher up ROM characters being used within the character set. There we go, we can see here, we can see start to see some reversed uh, characters coming in on the debug text view there. These reversed characters indicate uh, higher character numbers in the character set is being used, which is not a surprise, right? And there we go, we're just showing how the background parallax layer counter rotates depending on which character set is chosen. So there we have it. That's I think that explains this uh, demo effect. Uh, there's quite a lot of calculation going on in the background there. We can see that in the memory view with all of those green reads and yellow writes. So I think that covers this effect in this part of the demo. If you like these kind of Commodore 64 technical deep dives, then please do consider liking or subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Have a great day or evening or night, wherever you are.